Here we have another momentum problem, and it's a little more complicated in that there are many variables, there are changes, there's a lot going on. So I like to keep track of all this information with something similar to what we did with energy, um, now with momentum, a before and after, and what I call an MVP chart. Because momentum is mass times velocity equals momentum, so MVP, and then MV. So on one side we have before, and on the other side we have after. And so I like to label just about everything here. So a boulder with a mass of 150 kilograms, so that's its mass before. And the thing about these charts is the masses aren't usually going to change. Um, the boulder is going to be 150 kilograms before, it's going to be 150 kilograms after. It's the same size boulder. But it's rolling along at a speed of 5 meters per second, and then it goes down a hill. So it starts at 5 meters per second, then it goes down the hill, and we know at the bottom of the hill its momentum increases by a certain amount. But ultimately our goal is to find the speed at the bottom of the hill. So here's what we're going to do is if you know mass and velocity, we saw in the last thing that you can find the momentum. So the momentum before is 150 times 5, or 750 kilogram meter per second. And according to this problem, the momentum increased by 1,300. So I'm going to write delta P, meaning change in momentum, is plus 1,300 kilogram meters per second. So it was 750 to start at the top of the hill. It gained 1,300. So at the bottom of the hill, it's going to have 2050 kilogram meters per second. And if I know the momentum at the bottom of the hill, and I know the mass at the bottom of the hill, I can now solve for the velocity at the bottom of the hill, because momentum equals mass times velocity. So I'm now just going to solve for that velocity. And when I do, I get 13.67 meters per second. And so that's how I can kind of go about solving this problem. And it's faster than it was at the top of the hill, which, which makes sense. Here is another problem where I can use an MVP chart. So again, I'm going to start just by dividing it up. I've got M, V, P, M, V, P. So before and after. So in this case, we're talking about a baseball. So its mass is 0.15 kilograms. It's going to be 0.15 kilograms after as well. It's moving at a velocity of negative 30 towards a battery. You might say, well, what's negative? That means it's moving, we're going to say, to the left. It doesn't really matter, but it's moving in a particular direction. The batter hits it, changing its momentum by 10. So let's just start off by figuring out how much momentum does this ball have to begin with. So negative 30 times 0.15, it's beginning with negative 4.5 kilogram meters per second. So the batter hit it and caused it to gain 10 kilogram meters per second. So delta P equals positive 10 kilogram meters per second. So its new momentum, negative 4.5 plus 10, it now has positive 5.5 kilogram meters per second. So now I have enough information to find my velocity, which is what the question was asking. So I know that 5.5, the momentum, equals mass, 0.15, times V. And then solving for V, basically dividing by 0.15, I get it is 36 0.67 meters per second. And notice this is a positive velocity. That means it's going the opposite way. So the baseball was starting off going uh, 30 to the left. And the batter hit it the other way, 36.67 meters per second. So it was hit faster than it was really pitched, but it's pretty close. So that's how you solve a momentum problem using an MVP chart. It, um, I think it helps you organize your information a lot better see how it works out conceptually a little bit better. So we will continue this when we talk about collisions later. We'll use a similar version of this chart. So it is helpful to use, but again, I guess you don't have to, but I would highly recommend it. So until next time, I am Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.